Why should you read Fafford and the Grey Mouser by Fritz Lieber? Seven novels or bind-ups in their own right of short stories and novellas published between the 1930s and the 1980s. 50 years, incredible breadth of or, or width or something of publishing time. These are stories about Fafford and the Grey Mouser who are two rogues who end up uh, they come in fact so Fafford is a northern barbarian tribesman and the Grey Mouser is a wizard's apprentice who end up becoming friends and business partners and they get involved in all kinds of roguish activity in the city of Lankmar and the wider world of No One and occasionally elsewhere. So why should you read them? Not because of the covers of my two fancy masterworks omnibuses because they're awful and uh, bless Chris Moore but these are some of my least favourite cover paintings in my collection. But why should you read them other than not reading them for their covers? Well, there's, there's quite a few reasons. One, they're historically important. Uh, this may matter less to some people, but I'll start with it, just to get it out of the way, if nothing else. Maybe the first modern sword, sword and sorcery novels, a sort of post-Conan, looking forward, more stylish, more jazzy sort of era of sword and sorcery, uh, psychologically more broad with a wider range of, of themes. I say that Conan may be the best sword and sorcery ever, but I'm talking about kind of maybe a step forward from that in terms of uh, the form. Massive influence on Dungeons and Dragons. One of the biggest influences on Dungeons and Dragons, in fact, and I've talked about that in uh, a few different videos. And also a massive influence on Sir Terry Pratchett. Lankmar, the big city that Fafnir and the Grey Mouser end up in and work together in, is the inspiration for the name Ankh-Morpork. And, and I'll talk about this, but his humour is definitely a, an influence on, on Sir Terry. There's some basic things that are good about these, like his prose is is really easy to read on the whole. His action is stylized, but it's fun. Uh, these aren't hard books to read. You can get on with them. You can con consume them quickly, even though there is more to them. That they're not just junk, but you can consume them fairly quickly. And I think that that's always a recommendation. Easy to read uh, has its merit, doesn't it? But he's also not just easy to read and influential, but marvellously inventive. There's, this is speculative fiction. It's not just action with a fancy background. Uh, one thing you could say about Howard, great author, but is that really, is it speculative fantasy? Only occasionally. Tower of the Elephant, a few other stories. On the whole, it's a, a kind of action fantasy. Here, this is speculative as well as action and for example, the culture of, of Fafford's people in the story of the Snow Women, the jewels in the forest, is a really interesting a fantastical concept. as a story, the idea of planar portals in the wrong branch. These are things that he's exploring, creating, uh, visualising, which are genuinely speculative and are really enjoyable and interesting. But above all, Fafford and the Grey Mouser are just really good characters. They are... Sword and sorcery heroes, yes, they're rogues, they love gold, they love women. In that sense, they're very similar to other sword and sorcery heroes and sword and planet heroes of the of the 1910s to the 1950s or 60s even. But it's much more than that. A special feature here, they're, they're not a Conan type, they're not a force of nature with a code. They're both driven by heartbreak to their new lives. Fafford is a good man who can't abide cruelty, even from his employers. The Grey Mouser is, you know, a grey character, but drawn to the purposes of good by his friendship with Fafford. Almost against his better judgement, he ends up doing good. And that's the peak of the series, the friendship. In terms of great friendships in literature, I think this should be top ten. Poverty might separate them for a time. Uh, a rivalry in love might kind of cause a fissure. But ultimately their dedication to each other, their understanding of each other, triumphs once and for all over all. And uh, yeah, that's something which is, I think, for me particularly special. There's lots of things you could go on to say about, oh, I liked this character, or this was funny. As I say, there's, there's plenty of humour in these books. But ultimately, I think being drawn to the characters and their explosion through a really well-realised world is what will get you into Fafford and the Grey Mouser. So some of the best stories, I don't know, you might be able to find these individually. Uh, you may be able to find them online or whatever, or, or in audio form. I wouldn't be surprised if they're all on YouTube in someone's uh, kind of LibriVox version. But The Snow Women is very good. That's Fafford's origin story. Claws in the Night is really a, a very kind of creepy, interesting, weird story. 
Um, and Stardock is some of his best nature writing and description of a very long mountain climb. Really very, very powerful uh, nature writing with some really interesting speculative stuff in there. Other stuff, The Wrong Branch is good um, by his friend Harry Otto, Fi Otto Fisher, something like that. Uh, the Laws of Cuomong, which is uh, was published fairly early in a shared universe. And I don't think that guy ever wrote anything else. But that's also quite good fun. I think it's actually one of the better stories where Fafford and the Grey Mouse are, are employed by opposite sides of an underground kingdom's Cold War. Really interesting story. But anyway, that's why I would recommend them to you. I think they're easy to get. They're easy to, to read. You can definitely read one or two of the novellas uh, even if you're not sure about the rest of it. So that's why I recommend them. What would your reasons for recommending uh, Fafford and the Grey Mouser? Or why might you say, oh, I'm, they're not really for me, I didn't like them? Tell me in the comments. Till next time.